among the iconic heroines of the 19th century English novel, Maggie Tulliver in George Eliot's 1860 novel, The Mill on the Floss, is unforgettable. Yet, she presents a problem for many critics. The Mill on the Floss is a tragedy and Maggie Tulliver is a tragic heroine, but the critics fail to understand why she chooses suffering over happiness. For this, we have to understand Maggie's character. George Eliot has created her in a semi-autobiographical mode. Maggie has impossible ideals. She has uh, unrealistic expectations from herself. She has an abstract idea of morality. She sets an ideal for herself. She tries to live up to it. She is unpractical and facing deprivation, somehow she comes to the conclusion that in the difficult years of growing up, she can find answers through some ascetic ideals, some kind of uh, self-inflicted denial of any kind of happiness, a sense of self-sacrifice, a kind of penance and an ideal of sainthood. These are unrealistic expectations which she has from herself and which makes her choose or which makes her uh, go down what her close friend Philip calls quote unquote a long suicide. Maggie Tulliver's character is not regressive. We cannot call her regressive because the choices are not imposed upon her. She makes them herself because she has, uh, she has devoted herself to this abstract ideal of pursuing some kind of an ideal vision of renunciation, of penance, of repentance, of making an atonement. These are idealistic and unreal as well as unpractical vision and the choices which she has imposed upon herself. So the critics do not really agree and find her waste of beauty and the promise of youth which come to a tragic end as some kind of a hasty end in the tragic The Mill on the Floss. Maggie Tulliver is an enchanting character. She is an enchanting female protagonist. In her growing up years, she comes across as a highly intelligent girl who has an exceptional capacity for love, for affection. She has an ardor. She has a love for beauty, of, of perfection, which somehow do not get satisfied in the town and uh, living as she does in the family with very middle class aspirations and very limited uh, perspectives and she is lonely most of the time. Their lives are torn asunder when uh, their father goes bankrupt and then both the brother and sister, Maggie and her brother Tom, they try to make the best of a very bad situation. While Tom goes ahead in the world with determination, with a very practical and a very sound viewpoint, with a, a relentless pursuit of success, and he does manage to win a victory because he is a man of the times. We must remember that the 19th century in England was a time of commercial commercialization of due to the industrial revolution, great commercial prospects, the century of British imperialism. And Tom Tulliver is definitely a man who faces the challenges very bravely. Maggie is brave in her own way, though her bravery is somehow mistakenly, she chooses to pursue some kind of penance for or some atonement for sins which she hopes will bring her some peace and understanding.
and in her uh, ideal vision or her expectations from herself she rejects happiness she renounces it she chooses not to take the chance when she when stephen guest falls in love with her because she has these high standards of morality or virtue of denial of right and wrong and she makes her choice of facing adversity in the end the end is of course the drowning of the brother and sister but maggie's character somehow the in the modern view point her austere and her rigid principles her abstract ideals her religious uh, fervor all these do not really seem very convincing but uh, uh, maybe uh, in the 19th century george eliot saw her as a replica of her own struggles in life and so she has created maggie tulliver as one of the greatest tragic characters in english fiction so we see the transition of the heroine in english the english novel where in 1740 richardson creates pavela who we might say is a rather perfect wishy washy ideal heroine who uh, is an epitome of virtue and righteousness then we come to uh, the 19th century and we find emma created by jane austen as a direct contrast to the vapid virtuous uh, and uh, ideal heroines of the 18th century and in emma we find a delightful young girl who is real because she makes mistakes and who is energetic and vivacious and who is certainly far from perfect then we have the uh, borderline personality disorder in katherine anshaw in 1847 and wuthering heights by emily bronte uh, a heroine who is uh, delusional who has uh, hysterical fits who uh, is sometimes on the brink of uh, delirium and madness and who is certainly self centered and then uh, the second half of the 19th century maggie tulliver appears as a beautiful young girl all and uh, george eliot in her enthusiasm as the novel progresses she is almost equated to uh, a madonna like figure and uh, she seems to be a person who is full of an ascetic ideal which is somehow not real and which finally results in a waste of her youth and her beauty so certainly uh, the english novel has been women centric from its inception and uh, as we see the transition from the 18th century the mid 18th century and over the entire 19th century at least till the second half we find the heroine in the english novel uh, created in a variety of ways making them individuals and fascinating and completely original so we do or we can say and we do understand that these novels are certainly women centric and uh, richardson's pamela jane austen's emma uh emily bronte's uh, catherine anshaw and george eliot's maggie tulliver in 1860 they all exemplify an excellence in conception and they certainly hit the high benchmark of the presentation of 
a strong female protagonist in the English novel. Thank you.